Shaber 1000 here. Today, we're staying here at the boat motor. Got the cover off. Not really that I'm having issues with it, but I'm going to clean the plugs, see if it makes it run any better. Stick around and we'll talk about that as we're doing it. Okay guys, so what we're going to do, we're also, we're going to pull this cover off of here and see if this has got a thermostat in it because I noticed I had found a thermostat that goes to this engine. Now I don't know if it's the one they took out because I remember he had heating issues before he found out the pump wasn't pumping. So I found one of these that was stuck, but I don't know if they just took it out and left it out or replaced it so we're going to check that out we're not going to replace this today uh, because i don't have one but we're going to we want to get this out one more time before i take the motors off and everything and get ready to paint it because summer's coming up on us pretty quick springtime we was going to take it out today but monkey's not feeling well so i said okay i'll just go ahead and clean these plugs which by the way i'm going to put new ones in after we paint the boat and everything this is just for in case we want to get it out one more time this is a 13 16th take this off of here you should really use a socket on here yeah see because these these two stroke engines you gotta see if you can see that these two stroke engines they burn oil and they burn oil because you mix the gas and oil see that so we're going to clean this we're going to check the gap i have to look up the gap for these uh regap them they're not that old but that's not saying they gapped them right and then i'll keep these in my little waterproof box over there for because sometimes they will foul out on you out on the lake so see that one and this one see the difference this one has a little white on it it's burning a little hotter than that one but see all the oil now i do mix my i do mix my oil a little heavy it'll make them last last a little longer now it doesn't make the plugs last any longer but it does make the motor last a little longer it's cheaper to buy plugs than it is the motor okay so now we're going to clean these and i'm going to show you how i'm going to clean them and i want to talk about that for a minute because there's a lot of controversy going around about the process that i'm going to use to clean these okay so let me get you over here where you can see a little better so now the reason why there's some controversy on this is I'm gonna be using one of these what there is there's some blasting media in there okay and it's just essentially it's a sandblaster okay now they say you're not supposed to use wire wheels on these or sandblasters now I know this guys but they say, but they've been, I've been doing, I've, I've seen my dad do this, I've seen my uncles do it, and I was actually taught in auto mechanics class, auto tech is what they call it now, but back then we still called it auto mechanics class um, in school that, that uh, to, to use these, okay? And then a couple years ago, Oh no, that has changed now. Now we found that there's issues when you do that. Well, I've done it all these years and I've never had a problem. I'm not saying someone else hasn't or... Uh, it, but what my way of thinking is, is if we've been doing this since the 20s and 30s or whatever, sandblasting them, then all at once you start having problems with the spark plug after you do that. I don't think the problem lies within... The process of doing it or how you're doing it i think the problem lies in make the plugs good like you used to that is my opinion my personal opinion i have no scientific proof 
And I don't think they do either. All they have is proof that, yeah, it may damage them now. But it didn't damage them in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. It wasn't damaging them. Now, just a few years ago, all at once, oh, that's not good for it. It damages. Also, what they're saying is if you don't clean these plugs out good and you're using some kind of sandblasting media in there and you stick this plug in, you know, one grain of sand can cause catastrophic engine failure. It, it can, you know, I can see that. I understand that. So do this at your own risk. But what I always do is I always spray them out, blow them out with compressed air, you know, which is the same as being, you know, compression in an engine. Just make sure you clean it out real good. Um, like I said, I've been doing it for years and years since, hell, I was 10, 12 years old working on my go-karts and mini bikes. I, I've, I've done this. I've used wire wheels, wire brushes. I've never had an issue. Now at once they're having issues with them. People's blowing engines up by doing that. Well, that's their stupid fault for not making sure they had all the sand or whatever they're using cleaned out of it. That's their fault. So, you know, I mean, they say just when you clean them, just do this and that. Just use a piece of sandpaper. Emery cloth, which is a type of sandpaper. Um, isn't it sand? Isn't it still sand? I don't know. So anyway, that's my take on it. So what I've got here is I've got this thing. It can be mounted. This is just a cheap one. I think it's, yeah, Central Pneumatic, which is uh, what, Harbor Freight, right? You can mount it down on something. So what you're going to do is right here, there's a little button you push, and that shoots air into this. you got a little shut off here that shuts air off. Um, but you're going to make sure your air's on and you're just going to stick this in here and move this around just like this turn it and that will clean it really well and then I'll spray it out and I'll blow it out with compressed air it's no big deal so would I recommend it yeah if you think you can clean your plug after you're doing this by blowing it out using uh, brake cleaner starting fluid whatever blow it out real good use compressed air yeah I recommend I, I don't see a problem with it if you're having a problem with it I think the problem lies in the plugs because nothing's made like it's used to, like they're used to. I mean, I've, I've took these things out out of the boxes before and had hairline cracks in them. Put them in, I still got a miss. Find out there's a hairline crack in that. Is it from dropping it? I don't know. Is it from piss poor craftsmanship? I don't know. But I have had them brand new uh, a lot here lately, like within the past 10 years. Before that, I never really had a problem. Just sure, sometimes you'd get one that was damaged, you know, where it'd been dropped, and usually what happens is your uh, your electrodes there, they get touched because they drop them. You know, that's that's going to happen, but oh, that's why I was right there in the store. I don't care if there's 30 people behind me. They're going to wait. I'm going to check every plug. If I buy eight plugs, I'm checking eight plugs before I walk out of there. So, you know. All right, so we're just going to stick this in here. Just like this, push our button. And it is cleaning it. It's starting to clean it up really nice. So, all right. So I'm gonna clean both of these plugs. You see there where I blew that out. Um, I'm going to clean both of these plugs and then I'm going to blow them out, clean them off real good and we'll gap them. I'll show you how to gap these plugs. Okay guys, here we go, a lot cleaner. Now I want to show you how to get this gapped right. Here's a plug gauge, gap, gapping gauge, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is millimeters here. This tells you in uh, your thousandths, okay? Now these call for 30 to 35 thousandths on, on these, uh, <coughs> excuse me, these old oven roots. I like to go between, between 30 and 35, so I'm going to go with 32, and that's right here. And as you can see, it doesn't want to fit, right? Okay, now it'll, it'll barely go on the 30, which is still a little tight, all right? 
So what I'm going to do, you don't want to pry in between. You don't want to pry in between there and there. You just don't want to do that because you could crack that. So that's what these things are for on the sides here. Hey, these things cost like a buck in any parts store and you bend it up a little bit okay you can also bend it down or you can tap it if you're real careful if you need to bend it down some okay so there's 30 let's see 32 I want it to go nice and easy let's go just a smidgen more there's 32 perfect that's just about right that's Probably about 32 and a half, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna do that to the other one the same way. And then we'll put these back in and we'll get that, uh, we'll check the thermostat, take the thermostat, south, the thermostat housing cover off and we'll see if it's got a thermostat in it. So that way I kind of know what kind of parts I'm gonna have to get and uh, for make it ready for summer. So hang tight guys. Okay, so. Now these are auto lights. I didn't put these in. Um, I do like auto lights. Don't get me wrong. But when it comes to uh, two cycle engines, uh, boat motors, weed eaters, especially like um, uh, four wheelers. Uh, dirt bikes and stuff like that I do like to run the NGKs I just think they're a great plug just make sure you get the plug you need don't just go well I think I need the hottest plug you don't want to do that uh, there's a cold plug and hot plug and you got a bunch in between now if you can't get the one you want then you might have to go with something else I never did like champion I've just I found out that they, in two cycles, two-stroke engines, to me, I've always had them foul out a lot easier than NGK or anything like that. I do, you know, like I said, I don't work for any of these companies. They're not giving me any money. They're not paying me anything. Um, it's just my preference. Okay. Now, you know... Some people might prefer Champion. My uncle retired from a Champion spark plug in Cambridge, Ohio on Route 40, right off of uh, Interstate 70. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, you know, I just, I, I don't care for him. Okay, now let me tilt you up here. We're gonna take these three screws out right in here should be a little tiny thermostat looks just like the thermostat on a car only it's tiny cute as hell uh i think i may have it have it in the garage i don't know or i'd show it to you what i might do is put a piss tube in here bring it out there so you can really tell for sure when it's pumping or not but that'll be a later project and a later video, which I think I will do. I've seen guys doing it. I've done them before. Uh, there we go. Yeah, see, it's out. <coughs> Excuse me. See, there is no thermostat in here, and there should be. There should be a thermostat in there, and there's not. So, I'm definitely going to have to get a thermostat. You can run them for a little bit like that. I wouldn't, you know, try to run one like that all the time. You know what I mean? Just constantly, just don't worry about it. I, I wouldn't do that. Um, let me get a pick and pick this dirt out of here. But, yeah, I'm going to pick this dirt out of here. Let me see if I can find that little, uh, shoot, thermostat. And I'll show you what it looks like, okay? So, hang tight, guys. 
Okay, so got my little pick here. Pick this stuff out of here. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is the thermostat. And it's cute. And I know it's no good because I stuck it in boiling water and uh, it didn't open. So there's how that sets, just like that. And then, of course, this gets put on top like that. And you tighten it down, it's real easy. In order to, now to put a piss tube on here, you just drill this hole out. You drill a hole out here. You put a little, uh, something like a zert fitting, a little nipple in there. And you just run a hose out and down wherever you want. I'm usually on that side when I'm running this, I think, ain't I? Whichever side I usually set on is what side I'll run it down through so it can piss out. But So I am am going to need one of these. So that's all right. Now, uh, I'm going to get my RTV sealer. It's right over here. I don't know if this is any good or not. Feels soft inside, but... I got some orange high temp, which is what I like to use on stuff like this. Uh, but it's got the same issue as this. What happens is these crack, these uh, lids crack, see? That crack in that lid there. And that lets air get in. It dries them up up here. And I just pushed it out the side. So that'll work. And I'll just, um, what I'll do, just put this tube in a Ziploc baggie, squeeze the air out of it, and it'll keep it from drying up. So it's still good. If you can squeeze here, you can still use it, even if you got to cut it open in a, uh, in a pinch. You know you can do that so there's that all right now let's go and put this lid back on it just it's not gonna do any good but just to have it I've got a rag over here somewhere <clears throat> there we go get that off of me all right now we're going to stick this on. Make sure I got everything out of there. Okay. I'm going to just put this back on here. Just like this. The gasket seemed to be okay. So. I'll put my screws at. There they are. So I'm just going to reuse the gasket. It's not going to be building up any pressure, it's just going to be flowing through, that's all it's going to do, so. But when I get, when I do this, I will show you again, just in case you guys don't see this one, or, or for the people that didn't see this video, or instead of trying to go back and look for it, I'll show you how to put that in there. And I'll show you how I'm going to put the piss tube in. There we go. That's good. Now, we're all set. Uh, I don't have a bucket of water over here, but I can start it up just for a second. I can't let it run, but uh, I noticed last time I started it, it was kind of starting harder than what it normally does. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and check the plug. So let's see if that kind of helped it any. Get some of my tools up here so they don't. And then I'll move you over here and we'll start it up real quick. Okay, guys, I squeezed the primer bulb. Seems to be fine. Let's go ahead and start it up. Like I said, I can't 
Make sure it's in neutral. I can't run it that long. But let's go ahead and start it. We'll choke it. Start. There you go. I checked it yesterday. I didn't start it yesterday, but I did check it. Was looking things over. I've got a new filter I'm going to put in here, and uh, see how that that gas is kind of. See if you can see it from here. <clears throat> right down there on that filter when I squeeze the primer ball, the gas was kind of dirty looking. So. I do have one of these filters I'm going to put in. I may put a better one than that. That's just a cheap one. But, as you can hear, it fired on, what, the second crank, third crank? And that's the way it usually starts every time. But the last time, it took me four or five cranks to get it. Well, probably about five cranks to get it started. And then it took a while to warm up. You know how it'll mess until it warms up. And then you adjust your, your mixtures here. There's your low speed. And there's your high speed. This is for wide open. And this is for like idling. Then you mess with it after it gets warmed up. So, yeah, that's already better. So, yeah, I'll get some new plugs in it. And and this is really all you got for a uh, for um, an air filter because it's in clean conditions, or in theory, it should be in clean conditions. Just like uh, um, snow blowers, they don't snow blowers snowmobiles they don't have they don't have um air air filters in them because they're around clean air all the time they're not in dust and dirt and mud like like say a four-wheeler or a dirt bike uh same way with this this is around water um so it doesn't really have much one in it you can put one in it doesn't hurt it but uh that's pretty much all it is right there um so anyway guys there's that so that'll be ready for our next little outing like i said i want to get it out once maybe twice more before i get it painted and then because i'm wanting to paint it maybe in march as soon as the weather clears up because I, can, <laughs> I can't get this thing in the garage but i can get this in the garage so i will change the oil in the lower unit the lube in the lower unit one more time and uh clean this all out i'll do that on the stand in the garage I'm trying to get a another trolling motor a bigger one my buddy's got so hopefully i can do him out of that put this in on treat it's not very old it's like a 2018 i think he said he bought it in september of 2018 uh i just don't like it this is a 55 pound thrust it pushes the boat fine but so anyway okay guys so there you go i just talked for like five minutes did my outro my ending and everything wasn't recording <laughs> so i'm gonna finish this i'm gonna go ahead and check on monkey edit this video for you fine folks get it uploaded for you so you can have something to watch later this evening when you get back from the pub and <laughs> you want to have a couple more just Put on a playlist from Shea Bear, drink a few drinks, have some snacks, enjoy yourself, and watch some Shea Bear 1000. Um, so yeah, like I said, I just wanna I wanna get it out one, maybe two more times uh, before March, cause March, well, mid February to the end of February, we start getting really good weather. Uh, so in about the first of March, I'm gonna take this motor off, take it inside, blah blah blah, and uh, I'll probably change the um, the lower unit lube again um just kind of go over it and check make sure everything's all right i'm going to flip this boat upside down out here and we're going to repaint it spitting on you guys repaint the boat 
and then we'll get it ready for summer spring and summertime it'll be ready to go until october november ish then uh i'll probably put a new set of plugs in it i'll try to do it about twice a year just all depends on how it's running and everything like that it seems to be running fine um so anyway guys so there you go i forget what i said in the in the first one but oh tomorrow uh, if it's nice like today, it's supposed to be decent. If it's nice like today, we're going to do some yard sale. We're going to put some stuff out here for sale because they're starting to run you off down here where we used to set up at the uh, Chevron. They're starting to run them off down there because these idiots. This guy, one person comes down with all this ceramic stuff and he's got these two big 40-foot trailers, I believe. Yeah, 40-foot trailers. And he sets everything up around there like nobody else and you can't drive through no more when he does that. So there's nowhere for anybody to park and you know uh, people are getting pissed about it so they're starting to run them off down there so we're just going to start selling here hell with them that pissed me off i i told monkey too i said they're going to get us run off down there and that's exactly what they did you know they just uh selfishness selfish people like that you know so anyway guys thanks for watching appreciate it <clears throat> thanks for hanging around and doing a little wrenching on the boat with me today and uh yeah, so don't forget to check out Monkey 1000's channel. And uh, thanks again for watching. Appreciate it. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. You all have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And uh, stay safe. All right? We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys. Take care.